Hey guys, Popo Woodward's back. I had a couple of requests that when I was doing my flags that the people actually wanted me to do the stencils or show how I did the stencils using a silhouette cameo. So this is going to be a short video. I've already got one drawn up and uh, I'm just going to take you from start to finish on actually how I use a vinyl cutting machine to do the stencils to incorporate it with my woodworking projects. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, so <clears throat> I've already got all the stars set up and basically I just saved those that way I can add stuff in the center because these this is the exact dimension of my union on my flags so right here I've already got the design done which it says Higdon's garage with the skull so basically what I'll do is I'll bring this and drag it and highlight both of them come up here to the alignment tool and then hit align center and line middle that way I know it's dead center of all my stars now as far as the skull I drew the circle and had to add a few things but as far as the skull I had to offset it because when you're doing these decals as stencils you're actually going to take out what most people would actually want for the decal so you're going to what I call reverse it so I had to do an offset which all the offset does let me see if I can't blow this up what the offset does is it creates an outer line all the way around the decal. So basically then I can come along and I can weed all this stuff out, like I said, the reverse style. So I'm going to go ahead and get the vinyl in the machine and get this thing to cutting and then show you what I'm talking about when it gets time to weed it. All right, here's my silhouette cameo, which they've got that newer version out, but we, we still got the older one. Which, knock on wood, it still works, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I don't really use a cutting mat because the cutting mat, this decal is too long, technically, for a cutting mat, so I just feed it in just plain. And you got this little blue line right here. Now, this part, especially this is brand new vinyl, I just buy an ugly color because, I mean, it's just going to be a stencil. That way, I don't mix it up with the other. But you got load cut mat, load media, and unload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the load media, and this part always tries to get me because I got a whole roll. Okay, it actually fits. Sometimes it, it hangs up right here. So basically, now that this is loaded, I'm gonna go back to the computer and send it to the silhouette and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, now that I got the vinyl loaded, what I'm gonna do is, as you see all this is kind of like a, I guess a light, light red or a faint red, you wanna come over here to this top right hand corner and you're gonna click on that. I don't know what you call that. It looks like a cut blade, but you click on that, then everything's going to go to a highlighted red. So everything that's in the highlighted red means it's going to cut now because you can actually set certain parts of the decals if you want to to where, it, where it, like we're here, it says cut edge, cut. You can do no cut if you want to. But like I said, this whole decal, I want the whole thing cut. So basically, I want to make sure everything is highlighted. And I'm going to come down here and pick my stock, which is vinyl which is already highlighted and I always double check my blade is set on one I've already checked that and I always double check my speed because sometimes my wife are getting down here doing stuff and the speed will be a little off and I find that when you're doing intricate stuff like this like around these teeth and stuff five is a good speed you don't want to go too fast or it'll, it'll screw it up so then after that you just hit send a silhouette and Sorry for the shaking there, but uh, the silhouette goes back and forth. It measures the size of the paper, and then it just starts cutting with the blade. But this part right here, from doing them previously, it it's going to take probably about I'd say four four or five minutes to cut all this out. Depending, I know the badges and stuff that I do, it takes a while. I don't know how it's going to do with this skull. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it do its thing and. When it's done, I'll show you how we get. All right. So, as you can see, this is a brand new roll, and it wants to do this right here. So when you get to weeding, it makes it a little bit difficult. So what I do, a little tip that helps me, is I have an old cutting mat. You can see this thing is tore all to pieces, and it's it's done pretty much lost most of its tackiness, but it does have just enough to where I can lay this down, and I'll press this on. And it helps me hold it flat while I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, I'll show you the beginning stages of it. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch in real time how long it really takes to weed this out. 
but basically you take your don't mind my kids upstairs they're doing eggs and acting all cray cray so i take the weeding tool which is a little hook and you grab it and you pull out like normally people would want to keep the stars and stuff but you pull out what you would normally keep so i like the yellow because yellow is a little bit easier for me to see but you just go along and do this and you pick pick out all the stars I don't know if my head's in the way and uh, once you get these out then you have to put the transfer tape down so I'm gonna go ahead and finish weeding all this out it's gonna take me a minute to do the inside around that skull and then matter of fact I might even do it time-lapse that way you can see what we're doing so just stick with me and let me get this thing done So this is what it looks like after it's done. See if you can get a better angle of it. Now the teeth, them things was a booger because they're so tiny trying to get it in there and picking them out. So basically everything, everything that's pulled out on my flag in the union, everything that is white right here will actually be white on the flag. Everything that is yellow will be the burnt charred part of the flag, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to take and cut the top part of this off and then I got to take some transfer paper which I'm almost out on that so I use another roll. I'll take the transfer tape and lay it over top and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Alright so I, got, I turned the transfer paper upside down. I stretch it out across the decal which this is at the end of the roll as you can see it makes it a little bit more of a headache to deal with. And I just take and cut it get that big piece out of the way now I flip it over and the best way that I figure out that I do it is I let gravity do its thing I kind of just let it bow in the middle and I line I ain't really worried about the top I line it up with the bottom and let it fall then I have a squeegee with a felt on it which I ain't really worried about those wrinkles right there because when I go to put it on the decal I mean the stencil part is going to be fine. Alright, so. Which that usually does happen when you get to the end of the roll. It don't, don't like to cooperate with you. And then I'll take this squeegee and I'll just go over this and make sure that it picks up every little piece. then I'll just trim it on down and it's ready to put on the flag. All right, decals upside down. I peeled the backing off. So what I'll do now is, of course, the backing is all rolled up. Let's see if I can't make this thing work. All right, I will stick it back on here. If my fingers will cooperate with me here. All right, I'll stick it back on here leaving just the edge and I just barely push this down because what that'll do is when I flip it over it'll give me a chance to be able to drag it around the flag and line it up the way I need to line it up so bear with me one minute let me get this done usually what I do is I line the bottom up with this and then I line this edge up. That way I know it's fairly straight. All right. I mash it down. Pick it back up. I remove the backing completely. And then once again, I let it get a fold in it. And I let gravity do its thing. Hey, now just try to work out the bubbles and like I said these creases right here that ain't no big deal 
It would be if you're using it as a decal itself, but for a stencil, you can work with it. So now what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll just run over top of it with that to smooth it all out and make sure it sticks really good to the wood. So basically, like I said, I use a paper towel because it's slick. My fingers are not slick and I can take and just really work on all this small stuff to make it stick. Now right here, I don't know if you can see it, my H screwed up, it broke, they broke away. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is when I peel this off, if I have to, I'll cut another H, just the H. But I'm thinking that I might be able to pick this one up and just move it over to where it's touching again and replace it and then mash it back down. But sometimes you have these little hiccups with it. You just gotta, my biggest thing is patience trying to work through it. But, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this all adhered to it. Then I'll take and pull the transfer tape off real easy and then expose the decal itself. All right, like I told you, that little ripple that I had in the transfer tape, when you're doing the stencil, see, I just mashed it back down right here, so it, it did not affect the decal whatsoever. So now that I got all this down, and in the time-lapse video where you see me doing a lot of this, all I did was went by with my thumb, and I pressed, because you want to make sure every one of these edges right here are completely down, or the paint, when you go to paint it, it's going to bleed up under the decal and make one big old mess. So I just did this to make sure I had it all pressed down real firm. Now I'm gonna get the paint out and the paintbrush and show you how I do that. The paint I use to do these is like, of course this is blue, I'm not doing blue, but it's acrylic craft paint. This one's just a little small bottle and this is actually what I'm gonna use. And it says, uh, it's snow white. It doesn't matter what white it is because I antique the white with stain anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this, a little dab on my saucer here. And I got a little bitty paintbrush. And the way that I do these is I don't brush them on because you risk more of a chance of, of making it bleed under it. I literally just take it and I blot it very lightly throughout the entire decal. Plus it gives it more of a rustic look. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing back to time-lapse mode and show you how I paint them. And now that I got all the paint on, I'm gonna cut the old ceiling fan on and let it do its job. Cause this acrylic paint, it, it goes really far. You can see I put a little dab in there and I still got right much left. So it dries really fast. So once this is dry to the touch, then I'll peel the decal back off and then I'll take another pick and start picking all the little small pieces out. So we're gonna let it dry and then I'll be right back with you. All right, so now this is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this off and go ahead and pick the rest of the stuff out. You still sometimes get a little bit of bleed out. What I do is I take this little pick and I come through here and I just scratch it off, just trying to dress it up a little bit. But uh, like I said, it's one of those time consuming things again, but it's worth it. But anyhow, so what I'll do is I'll scratch all these off. Like I said, I take dark walnut stain and I put it over, I put it over top of the decal let me back y'all back out. I take dark walnut stain, put it over top of the decal, which that'll hide a lot of the blemishes. I let it sit for probably a minute and a half, and then I just wipe it all off. But like I said when on my last flag video, when you do these decals, especially when you char the wood, you have to put a coat, or at least I do, I have to put a coat of polyurethane down first, or you'll play the dickens trying to get that decal to stick to that charred wood. So it does have a thin layer of poly on it now. And once I get the stain on it, get everything wiped off and where I need it, then I'll probably put 
three or four more coats of poly over top of it. All right, <clears throat> so now, like I said, here's my dark walnut stain, which that can is just about empty. So I should be able to get just enough to do what I need to do, hopefully. All right, so I'm just gonna take it, like I said, and rub the stain on it, just the paint. And <clears throat> when I started this video, I told you it's gonna be a short video, but I lied. So the more I thought about it, I figured I'd really go into detail because I have a lot of people wanting to know exactly what I do with the stencils. So I just didn't wanna leave nothing out. But then again, that's why, that's why YouTube has a fast forward button or you can double tap to the right and it'll jump 10 seconds. So if you wanna skip, then feel free, whatever floats your boat. So basically, <clears throat> I go pretty heavy, especially right here where the seams are, where the wood's put together. But I go pretty heavy on them and let it sit there and soak. And I'll let that set for about a minute and then I'll come back and wipe it off. And then if that's set for a minute, I'll take a clean rag And I'm just gonna, like I said, I'll just take and wipe it off. As you can see, <clears throat> let me flip it to a better side, or a cleaner side, rather. As you can see, <clears throat> it really dulls down that white where it's not so sharp, not so bright, whatever you wanna call it. And it, to me, it just gives it that good antique look, which I really like, but now I'm at the point to where all I gotta do is poly, which everybody should know how to poly your thing, but I'm gonna throw probably three coats of poly, one let it dry, sand it with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I'll do another and let it dry, and then do the third, and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then this thing will be done. And this is what it looks like after you get the coat of poly on it. And you don't have to worry about that decal ever coming off, because once you get those three coats of poly on it, it's gonna be really protected. So that's it, and like I said, I'm sorry that the video went so long, but I really, I figured I'd just go really detailed to help any of y'all out that was interested in doing this, and especially since I had some people requesting me to do this. So I hope this helps. Like I always say, y'all have a nice day. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe.